Texas Land Commissioner and candidate for Texas Attorney General. He joins us now. Uh, George, welcome back. Good morning. Great to be with you. Hey, George, it looks like things got substantially worse since the last time we spoke, if, if that's at all possible. You're talking about tens of thousands from over 100 countries coming in the border. What kind of financial and physical drain has it been on the people of Texas? Well, we're actually putting together the accounting right now. Uh, I've had a chance to visit with the county judge that represents the area of Del Rio, where, of course, we saw imagery of 20,000 estimates ranging from 15 to 21,000 Haitians under the International Bridge there. And he declared a state of emergency. The governor did as well in his county. But FEMA has refused to, and this president, uh, declare this a national disaster declaration. The governor has, uh, as of today, filed an appeal to that ruling to say, look, we can't just be on the tab for this incursion and the massive amounts of incursions and apprehensions that we've uh, had to undertake at the state level this year alone. Um, so this is an ongoing process, but clearly this administration is not going to help out the state of Texas. This special session, we did appropriate an additional billion dollars to support the what is known as Operation Lone Star, and that's for deploying as many DPS troopers as we possibly can to the southern border, um, and to help complete the unfinished Trump Wall, the 300 miles that were appropriated federal monies, but that we're going to help fund at the state level. So, Brian, we're we're working on the def definitive figure, but right now the indications are not good that the Biden administration is going to do what former presidents have done, including President Obama, and that is to actually support states like Texas when facing a huge crisis like this. If Title 42 goes away, uh, everything gets substantially harder. Can you tell everybody what that would mean? So Title 42 has been an effective tool uh, utilized by our honorable Border Patrol officials to immediately remove and deport folks uh, under public health guidelines. Uh, this has been one of the, the great hypocrisies of our current policy under the Biden administration is that we have mass mandates, vaccination requirements, but yet when it comes to those that come here illegally, there's no such requirement to be tested or even vaccinated. And, and so this is an effective tool that the Biden administration has threatened to remove from the authority of our Border Patrol officials to to deport. Uh, we've used it sparingly in the context of the Haitian um, migrant caravan, but um, when I talk to Border Patrol officials along the border, they say that uh, the administration is looking at ways to curtail this authority that they can utilize. And it's one of the last remaining authorities because Mayorkas did declare this week that ICE agents cannot apprehend, detain, arrest, or deport illegals strictly on the basis of being here illegal. It has to be incident to another crime, which is crazy, Brian, that they are committing a crime when they are here. I know. But yet, this administration has decided that they're not going to apprehend. But you know what's amazing, uh, George? Nobody knows how to explain you or your family politics. So whatever you believe, you have to look at the polls and say, okay, what do the people want? What? And if you look at his approval rating as it relates to immigration, immigration policies in general, 24% approval. The border, the Mexican-Texas border, 23% approval. On, in what planet is that something that you shouldn't tackle as a president? I, I just, I don't get it. I mean, I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about the rationale, and, and there's one or two explanations, and, and the strongest one is that he feels, honestly, that he's building political loyalty within the Hispanic community. And I'm here to tell you, as the son of a legal immigrant, that it's doing the actual opposite that I talked to Democrats far and wide throughout the state that have said and told me that they've never been more embarrassed by their president than the current one, particularly those that are in elected leadership positions along the border that have seen firsthand a spike in homicide, spike in human trafficking, spike in narcotics trade, where cartels thrive in this environment, making over $15 million a day, the very lucrative trade just on the drug side of, it, uh, of the equation. So it, it's bad policy, but it's good for politics. And, you know, I, just as a concerned Texan, um, most of us, including Democrats and independents, are saying enough is enough. We've got to stand up. We've got to enforce our laws and restore a sense of security. And, of course, encourage other Americans to know that this is a national security issue that's not just limited to the southern border. Uh, Governor Abbott just welcomed 10 additional governors 
just recently this week in highlighting the spike in opioid trade, for example, in Ohio with Governor DeWine and, and other great governors throughout the Midwest that say because of the transiting and the dangers that we've seen in South Texas now have made their way to their respective jurisdictions. So this is a national issue. I want you to hear what Rodney Scott also told Brett about the border wall. We're paying contractors uh, for a while. It was almost $5 million a day between DOD and DHS. To not. Work. To not build the border wall. There's wait, wait, wait. $5 million a day to not build the wall. To not build a wall. Even though they have all the stuff, they have... There are stacks and stacks of border wall uh, panels. There's hundreds of miles of fiber optic cabling. Uh, there's hundreds of, bo of cameras that were being installed with that uh, that are just sitting. There's no action being taken. I mean, what do you think? I, I guess this is not news to you, but when you hear it laid out by somebody that did this for a living up until a month ago, what do you think? Well, he's absolutely right. Uh, and I've seen it firsthand, and that's why I brought a lawsuit against the Biden administration, uh, not only because of his actions being illegal under the Empowerment Control Act, but because this is just sensible management of taxpayer dollars. Um, the Biden administration absolutely is incurring millions of dollars of unspent contractor and breakup fees with contractors up and down the border. The good news is the state of Texas will step in and assume some of those contractual responsibilities to build our own wall. Have you started yet? Or permanent. So right now, Texas Facility Commission um, is procuring contract. They selected two contractors. Um, we have dedicated the state, at least at the land office, over 200,000 acres. Uh, so there's still quite a bit of engineering. There's a little bit of eminent domain work with private landowners. But considering that the state can build on its own acreage managed by the land office, we're moving forward right now on engineering to and feasibility to actually construct. Um, but it, it, it's wasteful. And my lawsuit, is what I, it's, it's right now in the U.S. Federal District Court of the Southern District of Texas, highlights the fact that over $5 billion was appropriated for 700 miles uh, but only a fraction of that was actually spent. And so we have a long way to go to further secure right. the border. And regretfully, the coyotes, the smugglers, the migrant caravans know that Del Rio is one of our more unfenced areas of the southern border. Frankly, it's just the Rio Grande Valley and El Paso that are our most uh, fenced areas. But they're smart. Yeah. They know exactly the thoroughfares. They know the, the transit routes to get through our border, to get to federal highways, and then transit to other parts of the country. Right, oh, but it just allows you to ferry. You can save manpower when you put up a barrier. Simple as that. George P. Bush, our guest, wants to be the next attorney general in Texas, currently the land commissioner. It's a huge job. The other big story that we covered personally that I was on the ground with you is natural gas, the fracking, and the drilling. In federal lands, it has stopped thanks to this president. Now, natural gas shortages are global, and we are begging OPEC to drill more. How much short of capacity or where you were a year ago is Texas? And I know a lot of Texas companies own land in and drill in uh, New Mexico. So having said that, tell everyone the reality on the ground. So this is yet another America last policy of the Biden administration. I never thought in my wildest dreams that an American president would get on the phone and beg uh, foreign leaders to produce more oil and gas when we can actually develop it here, employing American jobs um, and creating opportunities in our own communities. And by the way, if they really do care about the environment, the carbon intensity of an American oil and gas well is a fraction of that in Saudi Arabia or Russia and other parts of the Middle East. But we are facing a, a shortage, uh, the lowest inventory and in, I think uh, over 20 years of natural gas, this is significantly gonna affect the Northeast in particular, uh, where we've seen a, a contract in New England exceed over $20 per MNBTU. So for just frame of reference, I mean, that that means the barrel of oil equivalent would be well over uh, West Texas Intermediate, so that's over $100. So we're looking at higher heating bills, we're looking at it's higher power prices. So the constituents that the Democrats claim to represent are actually being the most impacted by an America last energy policy. So, um, you know, let's hope for a warm, mild winter, um, but that's not, that's not a good uh, policy. We need more fossil fuels, more base fuels. That's what we learned from our Texas winter grid crisis. And Texas hopefully can lead. It, uh, unfortunately, this administration is hamstrung the rest of the country develop uh, this vital resource that we're going to need this cold winter. 
So I want to bring put put on, put on your analyst hat for a second. Beto O'Rourke, who looks like he's going to run for governor, uh, might have competition for Matthew McConaughey, and kind of called him out. So uh, Matthew McConaughey, the actor who hasn't said he's in but doesn't comment on anybody's policy, said this: Before we start saying, "Hey, this is where I stand. This is where I stand," which creates already a divide, or some fifty percent of the people are going to come at you. Let's answer these other questions about purpose of democracy. All right, what what is progress? How about this question? Do we really want to be a United States of America? What do you think? Is he ready? No, I don't. I mean, you can't win a race in Texas on platitudes and generalities and, um, you know, poet philosophy, which is what he has described himself. Um, you know, look, he, he deserves a lot of credit for being a good actor. Um, he's been very philanthropic, not only here in Austin, but for other uh, situations throughout our state, like Hurricane Harvey. But when it comes down to the brass knuckle element of Texas politics, which can be rough and tumble, uh, he's starting to get the real questions, like where you actually stand on the issues. And Beto uh, has basically echoed what Governor Abbott and a lot of others have said, and that is, where are you on the issues? Um, again, I, I think that he's you know, an interesting figure here in Texas, well-recognized but when it comes down to it, the public is going to want to know where you are in life, where you are on uh, free exercise of, of your faith, where you are on free enterprise ideas that have made our state so resilient and um, a, a place and a beacon of hope where people are moving here every single day. So if he's going to run for the highest office in the land here, he's going to ha have to answer some real questions. I don't ultimately see him running, but I do look forward to the race against Beto as a Republican nominee because this guy represents the liberal progressive wing of our state, and I look forward to that to that fight in the contest of ideas. Yeah, it's always great to go to Texas and say, I'll take your guns away. That usually resonates. Uh, George, <laughs> how about you as attorney general? Maybe you should tell us why you think now's the right time for you to, to make that move. Well, I'm not going to sit idly by, um, as we talked about all, with respect to illegal immigration, and see my state uh, under attack. Um, and our values, frankly, in the courthouse. Um, you know, I, I respect Ken uh, as a person, uh, but the reality is because of the cloud of legal suspicion over his head, he's been ineffective as our top attorney. We deserve in our state a population of 28 million, somebody who's going to be focused on a job day in, day out, uh, secure our border, backing law enforcement more than just with rhetoric, but with actual word, with actual action and um, getting things done in the legislature. And because of that broken trust between the legislature and the AG's office, we've been unable to expand the authorities to take on human trafficking or deadbeat lazy prosecutors, say here in Austin, that have decided not to prosecute any nar narcotics uh, cases, similar to what we're seeing in San Francisco, LA, and other parts of our country. So I'm not, as a resident of Austin, I've seen this defund the police movement firsthand and what it means to a community like ours, where our homicide rate is at an all-time high. And I'm just, as a Texan, I'm just not going to sit back. I'm going to offer myself in this role. I'm going to travel the state, run a retail campaign, engage with the grassroots. And so far, so good. We've been picking up some great endorsements and support throughout the state. George P. Bush, nobody works harder. And uh, he served in the military as well. George P. Bush.